So I hear from a lot of people that are telling me about all the symptoms and health issues that they're having from these sugar crashes that they're experiencing or hypoglycemic type symptoms. And they're always asking me, hey, what supplements should I take? What diet should I use to help improve this blood sugar crashing issue? So in this video, I wanna help you understand that you can't really know what steps are gonna be right for you until you understand the type of hypoglycemia you're experiencing. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So just remember, I'm not giving you any specific advice for your hypoglycemia in this video because you're going to see that you're really going to have to do some work to understand the right steps. So when we look at this type of situation, we need to understand that there's never going to be a diet that's right for every person. And there's never even going to be a diet that's right for every person that is experiencing the same symptom because we all process foods differently. So in my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, I kind of teach people how to look at their own body chemistry to get an idea of the types of foods that their body may be processing a little bit differently. And that book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below where you can get that whole thing totally for free if you want to dig into some of these things a little bit more. But for this conversation, it's important to understand that some people are going to be balanced, and some people are going to have their body tending to want to burn fat more than glucose, and some people's body will be better at burning glucose than it is at burning fat. So when we're looking at hypoglycemia, we really need to understand how blood sugar can really vary, and we really need to understand how the ability for insulin to process that blood sugar is really gonna vary from person to person. So what we really want is to be able to process both sugar and fat efficiently. And these people are going to be balanced. Now, somebody's body is preferring to burn fat. We call those people a fat burner. Now, in a lot of cases, these individuals are going to have a lot of excess weight. And they'll be like, well, I'm not a fat burner. Look at all this fat that I have. But the reality is that the body's having such a hard time processing glucose correctly that pretty much any carb that they eat ends up getting stored as fat. So just don't be confused about a fat burner would have a low body fat situation. That's usually not the case. And it's important to understand how insulin relates to each of these. If we're looking at a carb burner and somebody's predominantly burning carbohydrates, a lot of times their insulin is almost acting like a bully. Like it processes that glucose a little bit too efficiently, a little bit too aggressively. And with this fat burner situation, a lot of times these individuals are leaning on that insulin resistance side. So let's look at some significantly different responses to eating carbohydrates or sugars. So let's say that this person that is processing both glucose and fat efficiently, they're balanced that they have some pie. And this could really be any kind of starch or carbohydrate or sugar. I'm sorry if this video makes you want to eat pie. But when they eat some pie here, they're going to have a rise in blood sugar. So this sugar is going to come up because of the sugars that came into the system. And as a response, the body's gonna produce this insulin that will also come up with that blood sugar, and then the insulin's job is to help that sugar sweep into the cells so that it can be utilized correctly. And then this insulin is going to help this blood sugar come back down to a reasonable range. We really like to have this blood sugar kind of on an even keel and stay in this range because if insulin is not too high, then the body has the ability to access stored fat. So when we burn up our glucose, now the body has this backup fuel system. But when we look at this same situation for someone who's leaning on this insulin resistance side, and if you don't know, insulin resistance is really just about, you know, maybe this person had the pie shop on speed dial and they're eating carbohydrates or sugars in excess most of the time throughout the day, every day. And when that's the case, that really makes insulin go high all the time. And now the cells are gonna get tired of insulin yelling at them all day, hey, get this glucose out of here, and eventually the cells stop to listen. They become resistant to that insulin. Now blood sugar accumulates, and that blood sugar goes high, and then a la peanut butter sandwiches were type two diabetic. So that's a scenario that we're looking at with insulin resistance. So when this individual eats the same amount of carbohydrates that they did over here with this same pie, we're gonna see this blood sugar come up, but keep in mind that blood sugar is often already high when someone is insulin resistant. So the total accumulation of that sugar could actually come up here. But again, this insulin is going to come up 
Because remember, its job is to sweep this glucose into out of the bloodstream so that the body can utilize that correctly. But in this scenario, the cells are not really listening to that insulin. So the body's like, oh, wow, well, I made some insulin, but the glucose is still really high in the blood sugar. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to make more insulin. So it raises this insulin even higher because that's its response when there's glucose in the bloodstream. Oh, I, I'm supposed to make insulin when I do this. I'm just going to do my job. So eventually, this insulin becomes so high and there's such a demand to sweep glucose out of the bloodstream that it's almost like the person turned on like five furnaces in their house and now the house is like boiling hot. So this incredibly high amount of insulin then sweeps way too much blood sugar out of the bloodstream and the person can have a sugar crash. Now their sugar is too low and they can't really function correctly. So when we're looking at the result, we see this same spike that comes up, but then we see this crash that goes too low. Instead of just bringing blood sugar under this even keel where the person can still function and they know their name and they're not cussing at their neighbors. So this is a different response. This is not an optimal situation. So now let's look what happens when this person has some pie. The pie is delicious. We see again, we see this blood sugar come up and then the insulin comes up to help process those sugars just like we saw over here with these folks. The problem is this person's insulin is a big bully and it's gonna show up like, look at the job that I can do, hold my beer and see what happens here. And it processes this glucose way too aggressively and we get a sugar crash again. So again, this person can't function, they're not working right, all that kind of stuff. We have the same response, but it was from wildly different reasons. This individual had the sugar crash because insulin went way too high and after it accumulated, it created that sugar crash. This individual had the sugar crash because their insulin was way too effective. It was processing that glucose more aggressively than it really should be. So I talked about this a little bit in another video that I did on who should not use chromium. Chromium is a supplement that there's a lot of studies out that show, oh, this can really help with your hypoglycemic issues. Just use some chromium. But chromium helps an individual process sugars more efficiently. So in this individual where this person is not processing glucose very efficiently at all, chromium could really be a big help. It could help them do that. They don't need to use as much insulin. Insulin can come down over time. That could even help the person become less insulin resistant. But in this scenario, with this individual, same symptom, study didn't really talk about different types of hypoglycemia. It's just talking about if you have hypoglycemia and you're having sugar crashes. But if this individual uses chromium, they're magnifying a problem that already exists. They're already processing those sugars too efficiently. And they're going to take some supplement that's going to make that even more efficient they're really going to set themselves on fire and create all kinds of trouble. Same with diet type situations. There's some scenarios this person could go on a very low carb diet, maybe even a carnivore diet, maybe a high fat diet, and they're processing fats better than they are glucose, so they would really thrive on that. But remember this individual, their body is preferring to burn carbs over fats. So they go on a high fat, low carb diet, they just took away the only fuel source that their body had and they gave their body a burden by providing all of this fuel that the body doesn't seem to have the ability to process correctly. And there's lots of other reasons that a person wouldn't be able to process fats or carbs. There's digestive malfunctions. I go over all of that in the book that you can get for free in the description below. But the point here is that one step is really not going to be right for both of these folks. You really need to understand what's going on. So we want to get some clues of which side of this issue we might be landing on if we're having hypoglycemic issues. So when we're looking at this fat burner scenario, a lot of times we can just look at our fasting glucose. You can pick up a glucometer at a like a pharmacy for 30 or $40 and look at your glucose right when you wake up in the morning. And if that number is high, like it's, you know, over 100, that's a sign that the individual is leaning towards that insulin resistance side. Now, if somebody's fasting glucose is like 110, 115, well, that's a really strong sign that the body is not processing glucose fast and well enough to bring that number down by the time we wake up the next day. So that would be a strong indication that maybe the person is leaning more on this type of hypoglycemic reaction. Another issue we could look at is we could look at our breath rate. So we can just set a timer for 60 seconds and just count the number of inhales that we take in a minute, not inhale one, exhale two, just count the inhales. 
And if that breath rate is on the lower side, like maybe it's below 12, that can be a sign that we're not processing carbohydrates correctly. I'm not going to dig too deeply into this, but basically a byproduct of processing carbohydrates correctly is CO2. And CO2 will acidify the bloodstream, so then the body will kind of increase the rate at which we're breathing to huff off some of that CO2 and balance out the pH of that blood. But if we're not processing glucose correctly, then that breath rate will go down because the blood may be leaning too far on that alkaline side because the body's not producing enough CO2. So the body has backup mechanisms to try to kind of balance that out. And if we understand that, we can just look at our physiology to get an idea of which side we may be on. Now, neither of these things are, are diagnostic, but when we look at all of the picture, we can really get an idea. Another picture we can look at is we can look at our urine pH at least two hours after a meal, but not first thing in the morning. It should be sometime after a meal. And if that urine pH is low, like, you know, 5.5, 5.6, something like that, that can be a sign that the insulin is not working as efficiently. And if that urine pH is on the higher side, like over 6.2, that can also be an indication that the insulin may be working too efficiently. So we can get ideas just by looking at our physiology of which one of these issues is really creating trouble, and then we can start to figure out what steps are going to be right for us. Now for either of these types of hypoglycemic issues, food choices becomes really important. Pie is not optimal for either of these scenarios. But when we're looking at the food choices, this individual might need to not only reduce their carbohydrates because all these sugar coming in is becoming a burden to the body. The body can't process it. They may also need to cycle the carbs that they do eat so that the body has time to really allow insulin to come down for longer periods of time so that the body is not becoming so resistant to this insulin. But in this scenario, this individual may still need to eat some carbohydrates, but they may need to change the types of carbohydrates they're eating. Maybe moving from all this processed junk carbohydrates or bread or pasta, you know, rice, all of these really high starch carbohydrate foods that are really going to hit a stronger spike with that sugar and maybe change to carbohydrates that will leave the blood sugar on a more even keel. That won't spike it so high so that when insulin comes in, it's not going to create such a crash. You know, things like, you know, butternut squash or Brussels sprouts or yams, something where they can get the carbohydrates they need to function, but without creating that spike and crash. So a lot of times a person can really experience some improvements just by changing their diet while they work to fix these imbalances or malfunctions that are creating these things to act in a wacky way. A person has the ability to change their body chemistry a little bit. They can change their pHs and see if that helps affect things in a different way. And I teach how to do that in the book, but we also have a totally free digestion course. And I'll put the link to that in the description below this video. And that can walk you through figuring out different imbalances that may be creating trouble with this and steps you can take to improve those. But if you already understand some of these things about your body and you know that you're leaning on this insulin resistance side, you can jump over right now and check out our video on steps to improve insulin resistance. And if you already know that you really have like a low, you know, fasting glucose number or something, you can jump over and check out our video on steps to improve hypoglycemia. I can't wait to hear about your results.